of how I got to take this sucker out. Okay, so we're replacing the water pump only on an X5 E70 with N52 engine without the four zone climate control, which means it's just a basic N52 water pump. Um, I got the splash shield and um, the strengthening tray, whatever it is, off. Uh, oil leaks as usual, even though we got it fixed a few times. Anyhow, um, I'm just going to do the water pump because it's too much work to replace um, the thermostat, even though I know it's recommended to replace them all together. So first step, I got the negative off and then I got the electricity cut off to the water pump. Now, um, still waiting for Amazon to bring the part, but uh, what I will do, I'll get the screws off um, from the thermostat side and uh, from um, the water pump side off so that I can proceed with the replacement after the hoses are off. Um, it looks like the easiest method to do this. I'll have to take the fan out as well, which is uh, gonna be a separate part of this video. Okay, then I remove the fan. And I think that the fan trick is in many videos, you gotta remember once you remove um, the driver's side uh, clip, you need to uh, turn that tap counterclockwise so that you can get it out without any interference from uh, the radiator hose. So I've actually replaced the water pump already, but it's sort of important to see where it is. Okay, so here's the pulley and here's the um, screw that I haven't really put in all the way. So if you wanna kind of keep your thermostat um, intact and just get the water pump off, you gotta go from the top, get to the screw and take it off. So it's kind of important to put the hoses back first um, before you get to the water pump screws and the thermostat housing screw. Um, this method worked very well for me. So because I have a lot of oil leak, as you see, I really didn't wanna um, tackle the thermostat housing um, uh, pipes or hoses that are really not easy to take off. Plus that I didn't have a thermostat code. So you wanna make sure about that uh, before you decide to only change the water pump. Okay, so my next challenge would be um, to take it off, to basically uh, open that hose. And as I said, I didn't really take a aluminum off, aluminum uh, hose or pipe. I just decided to pull the thermostat, uh, the water pump out with the thermostat kind of being released but still attached to the hoses. Um, so just opened the two thermostat uh, water pump hoses and I could get the water pump out um, towards the front bumper 
and then up um, removed completely. Okay, the next step is to put um, the two screws back in. Uh, as you see, I've kind of put one halfway in. I'm gonna put the other one. Don't forget the wire clip that goes between these two screws. So I didn't have any fancy tools and uh, not even a ratchet uh, wrench. And that's why I'm kind of hand tightening it with a uh, number 10 wrench, the top. Okay, there we go. So here's the top uh, screw for the water pump. Um, was a little bit of hassle. I had to play with it a little. Uh, not easy, but it did go in. And uh, so I'm going to tighten the screws on the bottom once more and put the um, thermostat housing back in place. A wobbly socket comes really handy for that uh, back one. Okay. So here are... Um, the thermostat screws I just used my wobbly socket and we're done with that the two screws are in place okay the water pump is in all the hoses are um, tightened and uh, all the screws are tightened um, the thermostat is uh, back in place and I've uh, connected all the electrical connections of uh, the water pump so I put the fan in so here is a quick recap of how I got to take this sucker out without removing the thermostat hoses and with minimal effort. Well, that's a lie though. Step one, jack up the car. I didn't take the wheel off or I didn't take any of the mud guards from the wheel side. Step two. Remove the two bottom trays. One is a splash guard, the other one is a metal tray. Step three, disconnect the electrical socket from uh, the water pump and the thermostat off. After that, I removed the two screws for the thermostat housing. Then I went ahead and unscrewed the two clamps for the water pump hoses. Um, I got those two loosened and I removed the bottom one to drain the coolant. After that, I unscrewed the two bottom uh, screws off the water pump, went to the top of the car, got the fan shroud out after removing this bar. Um, you have to disconnect um, your expansion tank top hose. Once I got the fan out, I could remove that top screw from um, the water pump, which on this one would actually be here. I didn't have um, a good control of it. I couldn't see it, but I could get it out with a uh, number 10 regular wrench. After that, I could just pull out the thermostat, uh, sorry, the water pump, uh, because the hose clamps were loosened and all the five screws were off the water pump. Then I put the water pump, the new water pump in, uh, basically did the steps backward, uh, put the hoses first, um, fastened the two hoses, uh, the clamps, and then once I was done with the hose clamps, I got all the screws in place. I, I connected the electricity, um, put the fan back in. Well, don't forget to disconnect your battery. And then once you're all with done, you can reconnect it before you bleed. Here we go. Okay, I've started the bleeding procedure and hearing sounds. Uh, it's working, it wasn't working before. So at least the uh, water pump is working. I'll have to check for leaks and stuff. I just got a generic um, water coolant from a local store. 
Good enough. Okay. So last but not the least, I'm going to monitor uh, the temperature in the car and see how the fan acts and uh, that should be it. If you don't know how to go through this menu to watch the engine temperature, you're going to do a little bit of research.